Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. So hot, you could fry an egg on it. What have you got for us today, Mike? I've got a story about a celebrity chef who's been slamming vegans. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, and that's just before we go into our game of the week. Wow. And we will also go to a local pride in Spotlight. But on screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media, where you can follow us, the TV for our website, and on YouTube or a podcast service, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as the names of people who have dropped us a line on the old tinternet go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Lee and the showbiz. <laughs> Showbiz news. Showbiz news. Kylie. I should Minogue. be so lucky. Yeah, we talk about her very rarely on this show. Mm -hmm. So I thought we would break... Have I met her? I have, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, she's so she's fresh off her massive success of Padam Padam, which has gone Padam Padam. Padam Padam. Don't song. add to the gallery. Uh, but I had to. I felt you the didn't. need to do that. <laughs> so, so fresh off the sex of Padam Padam, which has been a massive hit worldwide mm. and has got into the top ten of the UK singles charts. Just like Edith Piaf did originally with Padam. Did she get into the top ten of the UK yeah. singles charts? Yes. I don't think she did. Um, so, yeah, so she's been interested. She's been going all over the world. In the beginning, interviewed mainly America. She's focusing on America at the moment. I think she's, she's trying kind to break of, America yeah, a bit more. Which she kind of has, but mm. anyway. So she was interviewed by a radio station in um, New York, mm -hmm. and they were asking her about Madonna, Match, Match, uh, and about whether or not she would be up for doing a duet with uh, Match. Mm -hmm. And um, she's like, "Yeah," she did. She said, uh, "Of course I would." Um, she's going on tour. I don't have a number, but if I was in the same town. And she was in the same town. It would be amazing. The building would probably fall down. We need to send out warnings. Mm. So what she said there is, I know where Madonna's going to be on tour, so I'm going to stalk her up there, find her. And, and I, kind uh, of bump oh, into absolutely. Her. I mean, we've got a picture. We've got a picture of them, Madonna, Madonna and and Kylie. Okay. Which one do you think is wearing better? Do I think he's wearing better, or has spent the most money? I think Madonna spent a huge amount of money to look like that. Mm -hmm. And Kylie has spent her money wisely. I think Kylie's aged very gracefully. She has. Mm. Right, she's obviously aged. Yeah, well, we all do. But, yeah. um, and I think Madonna's gone for a dairy, very different aesthetic. I thought you were going to say Madonna's gone for a Dairy Lee cheese look. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's gone for a cheese triangle. I want to suck her through foil. Mm. She wants Ooh, to look like like just an unwrapped cheese triangle. Ooh. Um, <laughs> So Kylie With is a little red string that would always come out or break off. It would never open. So she Kylie's also revealed that as a teenager, she used to dance around to, to Madonna songs in her bedroom. Um, and uh, it's kind of like, you know, completely up for it. But you never know. I mean, quite a long time ago, kind of like mid noughties, mm -hmm. Madonna did that concert in London and she had a T-shirt on with, with Kylie Minogue written on in, in glitter. I think they're aware. I think Madonna is aware of Kylie. I think they're aware of each other. Um, but I don't know if they've ever kind of... kind of. I don't want that to happen. Why? I don't like it. I don't like the idea of it. I think Kylie After should... what she did to Britney, you mean? <sighs> and Christina. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, she's collaborating with everybody at the moment, isn't she, Madonna? She's just done... Have you, have you heard Vulgar? Madonna and Sam Smith? Have you heard... I have, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you like it? I'm impressed that you knew the name of the song. I'm, I'm very on with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not keen on Vulgar. Are you not? No, Vulgar, Vulgar, Vulgar. 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 That's that's basically I mean, this picture of them together. Um, that's not edited or, or photoshopped in any way. Stre stretch of the, of the imagination. She doesn't. She's less like a cheese triangle in that one. Um, more like a strawberry mauam. Um, anyway, let's move on to something else. Have you watched any of the second season of And Just Like That that has just I've, started? I've not. No, not yet. No. I, I tend to wait and then binge. Binge. They're doing mm. two episodes a week. Yeah, yeah so not, you know, they're not like blo you know blobbing. They're not putting. They're not slapping it on. They're not putting the whole lot on at once. Exactly. Yeah. So, I'm gonna so wait and then binge. Yeah. So the so the so the exciting exciting thing about this is that um, Kim Cattrall returns for this. 
Really? In a, in a way. So last in a way, like, season... like, like when she just in a way returned just on the phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So last season we had a text from her on the on the mm. program. She didn't actually feature in it yeah. at all. Oh, great. She's... Samantha said hi. Oh, yeah. hi. Oh. She's actually in it. Oh, OK. OK. So a spokesperson for, for HBO Max, which is who makes it, has, has confirmed that she has filmed a scene of Samantha Jones... Okay. Um, and it's and it's kind of all to kind of tie in twenty five years of Sex in the City. Now okay. they, they have hate each they other. hate each other. So Sarah Jessica Parker has kind of put out this statement that's very very kind of through gritted teeth, kind of like saying. Um, that she said it's very sentimental, the return. <laughs> she said, Samantha is present in season one via text message and more so in season two. It was just a nice nod to the 25 years of Sex in the City to add the face to the text. Um, her scene is a phone call between Samantha and Carrie. So they're not in the scene together. Oh, God, no. Um, she goes, that would not happen. That would not be the same concept. It was, a, re it was <laughs> a really opportune moment in the story. Um, the stuff that was happening in Carrie's life that Samantha rings and they have this quick, quick, lovely, sentimental, funny call. They, they weren't even on the phone to each other. Um, and she said no, it was really nice. the lines at them. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, she said, I think it affects the relationship that we've been sharing via text for the last se season um, and this season. It's a hugely important relationship to carry. So we've got, this is a promo picture. They've introduced more, more characters, more diverse um, ethnic backgrounds, more mm -hmm. diverse sexualities. I'm still not over... Finger bang I'm still not over that. There is, there, there is, a, there is a scene in the new one where... where um, Miranda is trying on a strap on, and I don't. I couldn't help. I couldn't deal. Couldn't help but have a wank. She was. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't help but have a wank. Was that really? So her partner's basically in bed going, "I bought this for you," mm -hmm. and she's trying to put it on, and she's trying to de decide what size dildo she's gonna. And I didn't need it. I didn't want it, and I didn't ask for it, but I got it, and you it's there. It. Um, and I watched it twice, <laughs> <laughs> and I exhausted myself. Um, so. <laughs> I wonder why it would be a limp, limp in the arm. To... Uh, but apparently, um, uh, Kim Cattrall has got... They said Kim Cattrall was compensated extremely well for her trouble. Um, <laughs> she walked she away with <laughs> up to 500k in return for committing to the cameo. Um, she got to do it totally on her own terms with full approval over her part mm -hmm. in the script, and but she had zero interest or desire in her part to interact with any of the other cast, so she filmed it by herself. Let's go on to Gwyneth Paltrow, because we barely talk about her, barely, <sighs> ever. So, she's had her fanny candles that we've talked about. At length. At length. She's had her, her steaming of her vagina mm -hmm. instructions. Now, apparently, she's in the midst of creating a range of chocolates. Ooh, I like chocolate. Famously inspired. Well, there's a candle with about her that's vagina. A, that's a vagina. So, yeah, the, these candles are inspired by her famous This Smells Like My Vagina candle. So, apparently, she's <laughs> she's she's filed documents that will will kind of allow her to make chocolates and sweets and candies and stuff and yeah before you ask it is a range that tastes like my vagina your vagina not my vagina her vagina this isn't actually what the chocolates are going to be like that's kind of like a mock-up of what they could possibly be um so she wants to, <laughs> she wants to create a range of vagina flavored chocolates um to sell on her goop Website, um, I said it will cover both candy and chocolate. Um, when it, the, apparently the candles went out to sell out completely, massively quickly. So who who can only imagine how quickly her 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 fanny chocks will will will, will sell? She's saying it's a. She said I want to think of it as a punk rock statement. So when you light my fanny candle, that's a punk rock statement. When you pop is one it, of my badge chucks in your mouth, or is that you just that's a giving it to statement. trying to smell someone's vagina that you've never got a chance of sleeping with? Well, I do. You know what I thought? I'm having a bit. We're having a bit of that. We're having a bit of that. That chocolate. No, we're not. Chocolate. We, we've a, a, a prototype of our own range. Oh no. Do you mean the cud bum holes? Chocolate bum holes. But this is the prototype, obviously. Because are these modelled on? Would you? They are. They are the edible anuses. Yeah, but uh, on our own you... anuses. Did uh, you not? Did you not? Did you not feel me? Oh, no. Playing like a triangle, isn't it? Like, would you, would you like? Down the Eurotunnel, that. 
they are literally they're literally modelled after our own our own starfishes. Oh. No, oh. that's not. Do you like to try one? My arsehole does not look like that. I did at the time. For a start, they're nowhere near that tight. Well, I mean, it obviously isn't blown out, but... Um... Oh, you fiend! What? You just popped it straight in. You've got to give it a little lick first. Very nice. Nutty. That usually is after that's felching for you. <laughs> I, I'm denied about putting a tiny kernel of sweet corn in each one. <laughs> mm. Nice. Mm. So you can get those on our website. There's not shit. Nice. No, that's cheap chocolate. The prototype, Mike, wasn't going to use the good stuff till we know how, how in demand they're going to be. So there you go. I'm not having my arsehole attached to anything like that. <laughs> You know, that's the first time I've said, said that. that. Mm. Well, that's the end of this week's Shabby's News. Thanks for that, Lee. I've got a weird taste of bum in my mouth. And that's the first time I've complained about it. Well, you're welcome, Mike. Stick around as next. It's Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> you're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's go over to find out what shenanigans Mike's got for us this week. It's the buzz. Christmas decorations. What? It's not even autumn yet. I know. Why? 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 I just mentioned the word Christmas decorations and you're getting annoyed. Because we don't talk about Christmas decorations until at least the end of November. Okay. But are you a fan when they happen? When they happen? When they happen. Depends what mood I'm in. I'm either full on, you know, Father Christmas has had diarrhoea all over my house, or I'm just like... <laughs> this is a very brown house. <laughs> or I'm very... No. Oh, OK. Mm. Well, how would you feel about decorations for middle of the year? Christmas decorations for middle of the year? No, Christmas just decorations for the middle of the year. I, I'm always decorating. So yeah, sparkles oh, the and, and baubles and stuff and Easter. Uh huh. Other times of the year, <laughs> Halloween. Halloween. Pride. Okay. Deaths. Deaths, births, marriages. Deaths, marriages, bar mitzvahs. <laughs> always a banner. <laughs> always a banner. Always a bauble. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, it's a story about a town who've who've got a Christmas tree up. Have they? Still. Still. In June. Is it a right. Christmas town? No. Is it a theme? No. Just because a wood pigeon has moved in and they can't get rid of it. I think you find it can. <laughs> I think you find it can. What do you mean? No, they can't because they're protected wood pigeons. Wood pigeons? Wood pigeons. Not pigeon pigeons. Not wood stealing pigeons? chips, but wood pigeons. Are they? I don't Every think. Every we just hit wood pigeons. I, don't th I have wood pigeons in my back garden. Okay. I don't think they're protected. They're protected. You can't really? move them on. Well, you could eat them. I've seen I've seen um, Jamie Oliver preparing a wood pigeon. Yeah, after, when the hunting season happens and you can hunt them. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait till wait till hunting season and shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you too went, harsh? You went very Tory fox hunting. Yeah. There. But it's just brown. It's just brown and crispy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just brown and crispy. It is. Look at it. It's a state. Yeah, um, so a wood pigeon's living in it, so they can't get rid of it until the wood pigeon vacates the tree. Is it just a single wood pigeon? Yes. I think you'll find if you actually took the tree down, the wood pigeon would go. <laughs> I like that. It would be homeless. It would just go. It would just fly off. Where would it go? To the tree next door. But there might be a pigeon already in that one. They're not territorial. They it... don't, but you won't want to share. They're pigeons. They don't think that deeply. They just go, oh, look, that, I'll just go next door. And Frank's there going, hey, what are you doing in my house? Oh, they don't I'll care that much. I, what, what do you think that they don't care that much? I, I just know these things. <laughs> You've had deep conversations with wood pigeons, haven't they you? They go, coo, coo. They're quite loud. What? Did you what? Coo. <laughs> You've got some very cab wood pigeons. <laughs> Cool. Cool. <laughs> I think it's a very silly story. I think it's a silly story for. Um, Have you seen the buzz before? 
No, but no. You, but <laughs> I think that's a silly story about a council who are just very lazy and they can't be bothered. <laughs> so they're just going to oh, there's a wood pigeon in it. Can't get rid of it. Okay. Where is it? I'm going to find it and I shall take that tree down. <laughs> You're going to take the tree down. I will. And, and what? De push it over and go. There you go. It's done. <laughs> but it's protected bird. It'll fly so. off and nobody cares about it. A lot of people care about no, it. No, they don't. They say they do, but they don't. That's why it's still standing. Oh, God. When's hunting season? It's like November. <laughs> so it's It'll have got... Oh, do you know? Is that Zurch, hasn't it? Yeah. OK. Should it go into something a bit lighter and fluffier then? Yeah, is it somewhere, I don't know, like a, like a, like a wood mouse trapped in a... I don't know. Old windmill in Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, you like a takeout, don't you? Hmm. Yeah. Good. How would you feel is if, if you placed your order for your Friday night curry and turned up to the restaurant and it was closed? I'd be very angry, Mike. <laughs> be very angry. Very angry. I was very angry yesterday um, because I, um, I I had taken my niece out. We're not going to go into that whole story about that. Well, you thought that she'd been kidnapped. She'd been kidnapped, but instead she'd just wandered out of her eyelashes extended, because apparently that's the thing. Yeah. Um, and afterwards, after I found her, and we were, I said, oh, do you want to go for something to eat to McDonald's? So she said, yeah. So we went to the McDonald's. That's not the story you told me. No, before. it wasn't. The story before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She said, I'm hungry. Can I go to McDonald's? And I was like, oh, hungry. Hungry, are we? Um, so, um, <laughs> you should be dead with no liver. <laughs> yeah. So we went to the McDonald's, and it was closed. For river, for river, blah, 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 blah. for renovation, but you hadn't parted with any gold. Heart, I was you? angry because I was like, "What? How dare they?" So we had to drive to another McDonald's, and she's a vegetarian, so she wanted a, a McPlant meal. Mm -hmm. Hello, can we order two McPlant meals? Sorry, we've run out of those. I was in the queue, but do you know what I did? I wasn't going to wait in that queue till it got all the way through. I just drove over the Graff Verge. Anyway, that's my story. What's yours? <laughs> Story about a man who ordered a curry. Okay. Turned up at the restaurant, closed, been closed for ages. For. Uh, closed down. Forever. Forever, gone. But when did he order the curry? Just before going to pick it up. So we went on the app. Oh, okay. So we didn't went, ring oh, them and, the, no, and went, then they closed did, did, did it after curry. they made the yeah. order. Yeah, <laughs> right, let's screw him. Let's go for them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, turned up, been closed for ages, been closed down. No curry. It's a bit dull, I know. It is. I've skirted over a bit because I want to del delve more into your story. Uh, uh, two McPlants. Two McPlants. Was she very hungry? Or no, I was having a McPlant. You were having a McPlant yeah. too. What happened to the whole not having vegan food? Because um, because I've only ever had one McPlant, and that was here, and it was mm -hmm. cold. And I was like, oh, I wonder what it tastes like when it's hot. Um, so That's I had it, like what we had here, but hot. Yeah, but there's a different in taste when once something is cold as to when something is hot. And it was very enjoyable. Thank you very much for asking. Because we went to another McDonald's. So, so you went to three, three McDonald's. Three McDonald's. One was closed, one had run out, and the other one was just right. <laughs> <laughs> like Goldie Bot from the very fucking bears. <laughs> um, and if you have trouble ordering fast food lightly, get help. Or tweet us at the Could TV. We're also on other social media as well. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Do you know what slamming is? Slam me to the left if you're having a good time. The Spice Girls lyric. Yes. There you go. No, it's something else. Um, so it's when you, you take a, a lot of anger out at somebody. Sexual anger. No, 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 not sexual slamming. Not that's really burn. No, no. No, that's not what sexual slamming not is. Not sexual not. slamming is just injecting someone with something to send them out and then, yeah. What? Like, injecting them with what? Drugs. Where? To, to send them out of it and then basically raping them. Slamming them is oh. no, no, no. Verbal slamming. So having a go at somebody, like mm. social media, pelting them with, with posts. Okay. Right. Trolling um, them. Trolling them. But, but lots of things. So this happened to a chef in Australia. 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 Yeah. Very white. You want to rope? So I like it. I like it. New Australian accent. Um, crikey. Crikey. <laughs> I should be so lucky. <laughs> um, sorry, there's Kylie. Yeah. Um, basically, he's banned vegans from his restaurant. Fair enough. <laughs> you don't even care about the reason why, do you? If it's your restaurant, you can serve whatever food you want to serve in it. Mm -hmm. So, 
If you don't want to serve vegan food, don't serve vegan food. This isn't about not serving vegan food, it's banning the pe people. Banning the actual vegans. Well, yeah. then why would... If you were a vegan, you wouldn't go in that restaurant because it doesn't have vegan food. Well, this is the thing. A vegan contacted him before going and saying, look, I'm vegan. Could you make sure there's something on me for the menu? No. And he said, yes, he was accommodating. He said, well, I'll, I'll make you some, like, ravioli some kind of things. Yeah, Play-Doh. Um, vegan went, turned up to the restaurant. He wasn't in. It was his day off. Mm. Sous chef didn't get the memo. OK. Just basically gave them a vegetarian meal that was vegan friendly as a side and made it a bit bigger. OK. The vegan was not happy with this. They never are, are they? <laughs> and so tweeted continually about a vegan meal. And he said, look, sorry, my mistake. I didn't realise I was going to be off. I should have passed on the message. Next time you come in, the meal's on me. Not happy with that. They kept having a go. And kept... It's not her. No, that's not. It's an activist. Because what's happened is he said, no, if that's it, no more vegans, right? I've tried to be helpful. I made a mistake. If you're going to have a go, you're just not welcome. Right? And so this young lady has spear-fronted a, a hate campaign of booking, booking and booking all these tables and never turning up. So at his restaurant? At, yeah, booking at his restaurant. So he couldn't get any customers in. The rage had, like, subsided mm -hmm. about the pigeon thing, but now it's, it's, it's increased again because I just think... Get a job, love. Mm -hmm. Get a career. That was very patronising when I said love, but I just didn't even <laughs> say that. Also, <laughs> from a sweetheart. you can't have you can't have that on a t-shirt and have it as a crop top. For God's sake! <laughs> Should the word Holocaust <laughs> ever appear <laughs> on a crop shop? <laughs> is it for, is it from ASOS? Um, um, <laughs> I for, I just think that she's got way too much time on her hands. It was a mistake. Just get on he with it. He tried to apologise. Apology wasn't accepted, yeah. so he went, right, that's fine. I can't cope with people demanding, demand, demanding. So no. that's the menu. That's what you get. If you don't want it, you don't come here. Go, go to a vegan restaurant yeah. that serves vegan food. Mm -hmm. I would make her go into that restaurant and eat every single meat. I, I'd, I'd, I'd go to a vegan restaurant and demand steak. Yeah, and just sit there going, I want some meat. Yeah. This, this, this plant burger looks delicious. Now make it with meat. 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 I'm not eating your f plants. <laughs> you about to say something else? Though. I don't know what I was going to say. I want the meat. I want I want dirty, hot, sweaty, greasy meat in my mouth, and that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you for that. I like meat. Mental image. Yeah. Huh? What? Huh? Just think mental image. Huh? Dirty meat in my mouth. You want dirty meat in your mouth? Do you want me to say dirty meat in my mouth? <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> Apparently, Mike's not going to say I like dirty meat in my mouth. So, so I have said it. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I was just trying to make you pull a face by saying me with dirty meat in my mouth. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to say it. I said it now. But you said it now. Treat so yourself that's tonight, babe. Forever. Just, <laughs> just keep repeating it. Anyway, stick around. It's coming up. We have our dirty meat in our mouth game of the week. <laughs> watching Chewing the Cud. This week we are playing Movie Mo's and this is one for the lowest common denominator of the group. It's Mike. Off you trundle. The group. There's two of us. Well, there's, there's Elaine. There's, there's the Eileen. Eileen. There's the head. There's puppets. There's puppets. There's the voices there's, in your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all that. Game of the Week. So, we're going to be playing Movie Mo's, which basically means that Mike is going to be describing a film to me, and I've got to guess what it is. Are we, are we ready, Mike? I am. You've got a choice of themes. Oh. So you've got Heart Warmers. Heart Warmers. From Another World. Okay, yes. Not for Children. Okay. Or Remakes and Reboots. I'm going to go for Remakes and Reboots. Okay. French Revolution. Yes. Um, the, the boy dies. Yes. They all get really angry and so they kick off. Do they sing? They do sing. Oh, it's Les Miserables. It is Les Miserables, yeah. I hate it. I know you do, but I wasn't going to go with it. I hate it. I hate it. Cool. The next option, Not For Kids, From Another World or Heart Warmers. Uh, not For Kids. Not For Kids. Okay. Show. Sure. If you have a second job that's known as what? 
second job. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. Second job. Okay. You have a second job that you don't necessarily tell the first job about. It's got a specific name. Do you know what that is? Oh, I don't know, Mike. Okay. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't moonlight. Blame... It. Uh, yeah, moonlight. Well done. Was that a film? That was the film, yeah. Moonlight with Cher. Moonlight, uh huh. Whoa. Nicholas Cage. Gurning. All the way through. <laughs> Who was that? What's Nicolas Cage in Moonlighting? Um, so your option is from uh, Another World. Heartwarmers. We'll go for From Another World. We're going to go backwards with this. Okay. Prawns in South Africa. Eating cat food and then trying to get home by using a fluid that turns people into aliens. Prawns in South Africa? Yeah. That eat cat food? Mm -hmm. That are trying to get home by turning people into Well, prawns. they use the fluid that they use to get home also turns people into prawns. Turns them into prawns? Yeah. District... Mm -hmm. Seven? Keep going, number. District seven... Too nine. Too high. Way too high. District seventy-two. You're going from District seven to seventy-nine. Start. District start seventy-five. Just a little. <laughs> like a really, like a really shit like self-checkout. District seventy-five, please. Is it District seventy-two? No, no, no. Think singular number, but a little bit higher than seven. District eight. One more. District nine. Well done. I think I've seen that film. I think I have, but I'm not sure. But the aliens eating cat food. I don't know about the aliens eating cat food. Is there like a cameraman that that? Because are aliens just like living on this planet? Yeah. So they're put in a district, District Nine. Yeah. Right. It's the ninth district, and there's a big ship in space. Yeah. And they call them the prawns. Yeah. Yeah. And they go around eating people. And Do they eat pe people? So people eat them, trying to become them. Oh, and then there's a man that becomes a giant prawn by getting a black fluid in his face. Yeah. Yeah. What's his name? I don't keep wanting to say Edward. Edward Pornyman. His surname's Vickers. Anyway, um, so your last option is Heartwarmers. Oh, okay. Big Beefy Man. Big Beefy Man? Yeah. Destroys people's in it. No, destroys things. A Big Beefy Man destroys what? Things. The Hulk? No. The. It's a feel good film. It's a feel good film. It's a heartwarmer, yeah. With a, with a big man that destroys people. Destroys things. So he doesn't mean to destroy them. Based on a computer game. I don't even know why I bothered with that clue. Um, he's got a hammer and he just. Thor! Big buildings, his cartoon. Based on a computer game. I don't know. Wreck it, Ralph. Oh, I don't watch those things. <laughs> okay. So, back open up. Uh, remakes and reboots, not for kids. From another world or heartwarmers. Do you know what? Because I'm detecting a bit of a low mood with you, Mike. I'm going to let you choose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving up with you. Go, oh, I don't know that one. Don't watch it. I did quite well then. I got four out of five. I've only asked four questions. Four out of three out of four. <laughs> Just choose one, Mike. Okay. Big lizard thing. Yes. Owned by someone. It's a small boy that owns them. Lizard thing breathes fire. Godzilla. Is owned by a small boy. Is owned by a small boy. Mm -hmm. Pete's dragon. Yes. Well done, you. I never saw it. I never really watched that all the way through. I've not seen any of it. It's a Disney it. film, isn't it? Live action with a, with a cartoon dragon. Who can say? No, 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 did not watch it. Just realised that the next thing, Pete, so it's going to be a small boy and the word dragon, so yeah. Okay. Do I get to keep picking? Yeah! Lovely. Okay. When you put your fist inside somebody... Mm. ...and pull... 
they become what? Hollow. Is it the Hollow Man? No, they go. They go. Inside Out. Inside Out, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Children's film Inside Out. Oh, okay. Have you seen Inside Out? No. Is it about feelings? It's about feelings, yes. So it's about a, a, a girl who's growing up and she's got like key memories and stuff and like happiness and joy and things. Oh, okay. Look yeah. after her, yeah, yeah. I do believe her, her dad is quite hot, even though he's... Um, he, even though he's a cartoon. Even he's, he's a cartoon. that I've seen, seen the, the memes on the internet. Yeah. Mm. He's daddy vibes, 100%. Mm. 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 Sorry, just had a moment. Um, next one. Man with spiky fingers in the future. His teacher has gone a little bit crazy, keeps him drugged up. Finds out it's his daughter. Not yeah. Edward Scissorhands. No, not Edward Scissorhands. Um, is it is it a, is it a, is it an origin story? Is it Wolverine? It's not. Oh, no, it's not Wolverine. It's not an origin story now. Is it? Is it about Wolverine? Maybe. Wolverine. No. Nope. The story. What's Wolverine's other name? The. Um. Um. I don't know. The Heath Ledger. No. Um. Um. I don't know, Mike. Logan. Oh, okay. I didn't watch that either. <laughs> Have you watched Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman. Um, no. I only like the 80s TV series. Right. Interstellar. Have I watched it? Yeah. Well, but then... But then there, there will be no point asking me, because you've just said Interstellar. Have you watched Spider-Man? No. Okay, I'm just, just going to see what we've got here. Okay. Man, pipe, hat. Man, pipe, hat? Man with yeah. a pipe and a hat. Plays oh. the violin. Victorian. Has a living lover. Is it, is, it, is it Sherlock Holmes? It is Sherlock Holmes, yeah. Who's his living lover? Dr Watson. No, they were never, they were never lovers. Confirmed bachelors who lived together. They just f each other. No strings attached. <laughs> NSA relationship. <laughs> were they polyamorous? Um, that was really good, yeah. yeah. Anyway, stay with us, because after the break, we've got something about us going to a Pride. Ooh! Back to showing the god, Mike. Are you a proudful person? Are you trying to get me to sing? You know, I don't even need to. I don't. Even, <laughs> uh, it's not like a cat on heat. Anybody in the world uh -huh. would know what that song was just by going like that. That <laughs> you would know. <laughs> That's your Britney impression. No, it's not. It's it, it's what have you done today? It's Heather Small. Okay, um, so. I, I do enjoy being proudful, I'm sorry, I'm very out in all ways. Out and forms. about. Out and about. Out and about, if you're... Out and about. Out and about. Um, from Canada. If you're from Canada, yeah. Mm. Um, no, I'm very out and proud, and I, I don't hide my sexuality or anything, so I, I do try and body pride wherever I can. Just mainly hide behind bushes. That's what I've heard. Well, we spoke to some people at our local pride about what pride means to them. <laughs> So, I'm not normally used to daylight, broad daylight, <laughs> so I'm being a bit... It's more flattering. Is it? It's darker. Mm. So, yeah. Um, so we're here at a local pride, aren't we? A local pride. Local for pride local for local people. people. We'll yes. have no heterosexual thing. We'll let anybody in, really. Well, yes. Um, yes, yes. Um, you can, if you can, you can hear... You can hear someone... Body Shop? No. <laughs> chop Shop? I don't know the song. Unholy. 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 You always get that I wrong. I do. Unholy by Samantha Smith. Sam Smith. Sam Smith. Sam Smith. 
and Kim Petras. Well done, well you. Done. Well done, you. It's only yes. been out for ages, so yes. Um, but we're going to say hello to some people, aren't we? We are going to say hello to some See people. See what pride means to them, so let's, let's go and find some people. Hello, we are here at a local Pride, and we have found some more local people. Hello, who have we got here? Hello, my name's Siobhan, and I'm from St Anne's Hospice. Marvellous. And I'm Heidi, and I'm also from St Anne's Hospice. Lovely. Great. Marvellous. If we said to you, could you describe what Pride means to you in one word, what would it be? Acceptance. Nice. Yourself. Oh, good words. We're getting some really good words today, aren't we? Yeah, it's good. good. Yeah. Well, enjoy the rest of your pride. Thank you. Have a good day. You, thank you very much. So we're here at Local Pride. With local people. Yes, we'll have lots of people here. And we found another person. So what's your name? Uh, my name's Ben, and I'm here uh, representing Leeds today. Oh, someone that's travelled. Well, yeah, local, an embracing sister over the Pennines. Did they let you over the Pennines, though? I had to be quick, yes, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. And so what does Pride mean to you? It's it's a great it's a great place to come together. You know, it's so warm and welcoming. It's it's a big hug, end of the day. It's about being visible. Uh, it's a party, it's a way of engaging everybody, it's seeing friends you have not seen for a while. And you've all got this common thing of just wanting to be I don't know. Spe yeah, it feels special. It, 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 it's, it's a great, great place to come. So I would recommend anybody coming to any local Pride event up and around the country. Yeah, get on down and it's, yeah, just get involved and have a good time. Great. And if we ask for one word, what Pride means to you, what would that be? It, it's about being vivid. You know, some, some days you could be quite grey and dark at home, whatever is going on in your life. You could come here and forget that and really just tune up the colour in your life and it just feels vivid and energized so i'm here representing vivid for me vivid oh, nice okay. word we will we, lady gaga's just come on stage yeah, and yeah. know that you won't well, want to miss that sort of lady gaga yes <laughs> yeah so thank you very much enjoy thank your you. pride yes thank you, thank you. Thank you. bye <laughs> and here we are still at a local pride with local people yes we'll have lots of fun here we keep saying that a lot i need to stop doing that and we found someone else new let's take your name uh my name's tom hey Hi Tom, and why are you here? Uh, so we're here representing Outdoor Lads today. Um, it's a charitable organisation for gay, bi, trans men who are into all the outdoor stuff. Sort of hiking, mountain climbing, canoeing, climbing. Um, and it's, it's just been a great place to meet a lot of like-minded individuals. So, we are asking people today, if you could give what pride means to you in one word, what would it be? Hmm. I think for me it's about belonging. Like. I think it's a place where you can be like accepted for who you are. So why are you here at Pride? Well, we're here because we are from the George House Trust and we uh, help people uh, who are living with or affected by HIV. So basically we're here to, um, the word is, uh, I don't know what the word is. Um, we're raising awareness about awareness. HIV, that's it. Yeah, raising awareness about HIV. George House Trust is a charity operating in Manchester and Liverpool. Um, supporting people that live with HIV, so across the Northwest. Um, today we're mainly raising awareness about the charity, but also around key messages such as you equals you. Uh, so the fact that someone living with HIV and on medication cannot transmit the HIV to anyone. Mm, great. And so if we ask for one word, what does pride mean to you? Acceptance. Uh, one word, I would say joy. Acceptance and choice, good words. We like some that. really good words today. We are. Nothing filthy so far. Well, apart from the one I said before when I was talking yeah. about fellatio, but... Oh. Yeah. 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 Wait, I want to hear that. What was <laughs> the word was fellatio, oh, that was yeah. it. <laughs> Fancy words, trying to... <laughs> Not been looking hard enough. <laughs> well, let's go and see if we can find some more people. So we're still here at Local Pride. A local Pride for local people. We'll have lots of people here, yes. Um, and we, we found someone called Tim. Hello, Tim. Hello there. Um, what brings you to Pride? I just think Pride is just so important. It's still needed and it's really good fun. And like, there's lots of people here. And it, this is a nice local Pride. I prefer it to some of the other ones, but it's just nice to spend time with friends and chill. So if we ask for one word, what pride means to you, what would that be? Special. So that was nice, talking to different people that were attending the pride. Exactly, lots, lots of people with their own idea of what pride means to them, which was quite nice. Mm. It wasn't just one answer of just going, I just like it because it's fun. Yeah. But I thought, yeah. But yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is always good. And so, local prides for you. Yeah, because right, you don't go to the big ones, really, do you? I only go to the one big one. <laughs> but you don't you don't go to like the parties and stuff. You tend to go to the no, parties. I don't enjoy them. No, but when you, the local one, you, you went to the the party part as well. Was that more enjoyable for you? To the what? The party ish part. It was okay. Yeah. Less people. Well, it was more. It was less. It was less um, about hello, look at me. Mm -hmm. It was more. Let's just have a nice picnic and enjoy the, the Big arts. Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Or. Or well, the Nadine. <laughs> the Nadine. The Nadine Coyle. Flyer. And her flyer. Flyer. Um, yeah. So, yeah. A lot more local acts as well, so it wasn't anything yes. like headliners. So. Lovely things to shop. Mm -hmm. Lovely things to eat. Yeah. Toilets. <laughs> Toilet you could get to without a too long of a queue. Um, there wasn't a particularly long queue when I, yeah. when I was needing a, a, um, a tinkle. <laughs> to defecate? No. Oh. I don't defecate in public. That's nothing to do with pride, though. <laughs> pride in your defecation. No, I just needed a little wee. So, yeah, lots of people doing really good work, which is lovely to see. Mm. And I think that, that, for me, that, you know, prides, a lot more of the local prides, small prides, are really getting a lot more traction, a lot more visitors, because of the commercialisation of the bigger ones. Yeah, the commercialised ones tend to... It's all about big companies going, look what we can do, mm -hmm. look at our big float. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is that a euphemism? <laughs> Wasn't aware of that as a euphemism? How big is your float? Ooh, it's massive. Can I big floater? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that went sexy to pooey. Yeah, it did straight yeah, away. Yeah. Very quickly. Um, no, it was... And so... Because quite often, the kind of smaller charities and organisations get... <laughs> you get the sidelined at the bigger I think price. I was going to say get swallowed up. <laughs> Lucky them. Lucky them. Lucky it's them. like the smaller ones tend to get overlooked. Yeah. And whereas at the local prides, you can got a, you can really kind of have a chat with them and say, "What can I have for free?" And um, got a lot of sweets. Do you have anything to eat? Which is, yeah. is always nice. But you also get to find out what services that they provide as well. So they do. Yeah. I mean, there, there were some of the, the drug and alcohol services were there mm. as well. Which you know, some people say, "Oh, a pride, that's not great." But I'm like, if you're using that sort of stuff. Mm. Heavily drinking, using drugs, that might be the time that you see it and mm. you then engage yeah, with that service. Like yeah. right, mental so, yeah. health stuff as well. It's all exactly. it's all valid. It's all very important. Exactly. And I think it's it's great that as a community we get together and, and share those those mm. moments and support each other. Mm. Not perhaps pay for VIP tickets and segregate yourself from um, the public. Like I just go because <laughs> yeah, you know you got a port cabin. You go. I got a decent loo. Did you get a flushable toilet? Yep. With soap and toilet roll. Oh, fancy. Yeah. Fancy. Yeah. Fancy guy. And the reason why I pay for VIP tickets is because it actually gives more to the charity. Does it really? It does, because I got a couple of free sandwiches and two pints of lager. I didn't appreciate being um, being prodded with a cattle prod when I, when I tried to approach the VIP area. They said... They oh, said, that's the fetish area you went to. Oh... Oh, I'll never get that stain out of those clots. Yeah, if only it was your own. Anyway, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at the Could TV. Our website is a could.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcasts, just search for Chewing the Could. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>